Hey everyone and welcome to the chapter 5 of Fundamentals of Computing. Sambilis ang panahon, we are now on the chapter 5. So these, these are our list of topics. We have, uh, we were going to continue discussing on the different computer components. So we will be discussing about memory, uh, random access memory, read-only memory, and we will also discuss the motherboard, the memory units, and ports. So I, um, you might be noticing that some of these topics was already discussed on the previous chapter. So what we're going to do is just, you know, a recap. And then to also para mabalan pa nato. Okay? So let's start with the computer memory. So what is a memory? So a memory is like a human brain. Okay? It is used to store data and instructions. So computer memory is the storage space in the computer where data is to be processed and instructions required for processing are stored. So the memory is divided into large number of small parts called cells. Okay, so just like a human brain, oh, there are cells. Each location or cell has a unique address, which varies from zero to memory size minus one. So for example, if the computer has 64K words, then this memory unit has 24 multiplied by 1024 is equal to around 65536 memory locations. So the address of these locations varies from 0 to 65535. That is this example, guys. Okay. Um, ayun nagubahin yung utok kong giunsa. Okay. So we have the different memory. Uh, memory types, we have cache, we also have primary, and we also have secondary. So again, what is memory? A memory is used to store data and instructions. So so a computer will not run without a memory. Just like, just like a human being. So first is we have cache memory. So cache memory is a very high speed semiconductor memory which can speed up the CPU. It acts as the buffer between the CPU and the main memory. It is also used to hold those parts of data and program which are most frequently used with the CPU. So the parts of data and programs are transferred from the disk to cache memory by the operating system from where the CPU can access them. Okay, so what are the, the, the different advantages and disadvantages of a cache memory? Advantages, Cache memory is faster than the main memory, okay? It consumes less access time as compared to the main memory. It stores the program that can be executed within a short period of time, and it stores data for temporary use, no, you know, cache. And uh, the disadvantages, it has a limited capacity, and it is very expensive. So that is a cache memory. Next, we have Primary memories, or these are the main memory of a computer. So primary memory holds only those data and instructions on which the computer is currently working. Okay, so it has a limited capacity and data is lost when power is switched off. It is generally made up of a semiconductor device, which are, you know, not as fast as resistors. So the data and instructions required to be processed resides on the main memory. The main memory is divided into subcategories. We have random access memory or RAM and read-only memory or ROOM. Okay, so what are the different character characteristics of a primary memory? Um, these are the semiconductor memories, okay? It is also known as the main memory. Balik-balik, no? Um, usually volatile memory. When we say volatile, um, the data the data stored or the instructions will get lost when the power is switched off. Okay, so it is working memory of the computer. So the memory, uh, the computer will not run without a primary memory. Okay, and faster than the secondary memories. Next, we have the secondary memory. So again, what was uh, the, the different memories? We have cache, we have primary, and we have secondary. The secondary 
memory is also known as external or non-volatile. It is slower than the main memory. So these are used for storing data or information permanently. Okay, CPU, I know, I have an idea about a central processing unit, directly does not access this memory. Instead, they are accessed via input-output routines. So the contents of the secondary memory are first transferred to the main memory and then the CPU can access it. Okay, so for example, we have disk, CD-ROM, DVD, flash drives, flash disk, okay? What are the different characteristics? <clears throat> These are magnetic and optical memories. This is known as the backup memory. It is non-volatile, meaning non-volatile. The data is permanently stored even if the power is switched off. So it is used for storage of data in a computer and computer may run without a secondary memory. It is slower than primary memories, okay? So those were the different types of a computer memory. So let's get into the random access memory. Again, it's one of the primary memories of a computer. So when we say random access memory, okay? So this is the internal memory of a CPU for storing data, data program and program result. It is read write memory, which stores data until the machine is working. As, as soon as the machine is switched off, data is erased. So access time in ROM is independent of the address. That is, each storage location inside the memory is as easy to reach as other locations and takes the same amount of time, okay? And the data in the ROM can be accessed randomly, but it is very expensive. So ROM is volatile, guys. Again, as what I have said, volatile data stored in it in it is lost when we switch off the computer or if there is a power failure, okay? Hence, a backup and interruptible power system or UPS is often used with computers. So, para asa man si UPS, um, para ni siyang uh, once mag brown out or ni mga power interruptions or power failures, dili automatic ma turn off ang imong computer. Okay? Um, Nakanote siguro money, muna siyag, muna siyag basta na a power ni siya nga ginakonek sa yung computer. Okay? <clears throat> and RAM is small. So, both in terms of, uh, of its physical size and in the amount of data it can hold. So, RAM has different two types. We have static RAM and we have dynamic RAM. So, again, guys, this is how it looks like. Okay? So, you may have, you know, um, notice this in your motherboard. So, that is the RAM. Okay, so we have static RAM. When we say SRAM or static RAM, the word static indicates that the memory retains in its contents as long as the power is being supplied. Okay, however, data is lost when the power gets down due to the volatile nature. So SRAM chips use a matrix of six transistors and no capacitors. Transistors do not require power to prevent leakage, so SRAM need not to be refreshed on a regular basis. So there is a there is a extra space in the matrix, hence ISRAM uses more chips than dynamic RAM for the same amount of storage space, making the manufacturing costs higher. So static RAM is thus used as cache memory and has a very fast access. So what are the different characteristics? Of course, long life. It has a long life. You do not have to refresh this. It is faster. It, used as, it is used as cache memory. It has a large size, but very expensive. It, uh, it, it consumes high power, okay, or high power consumption. So that is the static RAM. The dynamic RAM, unlike static RAM or SRAM, must be continually refreshed in order to maintain the data, okay? So this is done by uh, placing the memory on a refresh circuit that rewrites the data several hundred times per second. So the dynamic RAM or DRAM is used for the most system memory as it is cheap and small. 
So all day RAMs or dynamic RAMs are made up of memory cells, which are composed of one capacitor and one transistor. So what are the different characteristics when we say about dynamic RAM? It has a short data lifetime. It needs to be refreshed continuously. It is slower than SRAM. It is used as RAM, random access memory. It is smaller in size. It is less expensive and less power consumption. So that is dynamic RAM. I think, um, again, kay mo siya ang cheap and small. So kasagara mo ni gamit, no? The, the dynamic RAM. Okay, so that, uh, that is the random access memory and its types. Now let's move forward with the read-only memory. Okay. This is how it looks like. So read-only memory, this is the memory which we can only read but cannot write on it. Okay. This type of memory is non-volatile. The information is stored permanently in such memories during manufacture. So a room uh, stores such instructions that are required to start a computer. So this operation is referred to as bootstrap, okay? And room chips are not only used in the computer, but also in the other electronic items like washing machine and microwave oven. What are the different advantages of a room? Um, it is non-volatile in nature, meaning the data or instructions will not get erased when your uh, computer is turned off or there is a power failure. It cannot be accidentally changed, okay? It is cheaper than ROMs. It is easy to test. It is more reliable than ROMs. Static and do not require refreshing. Contents are always known and can be verified, okay? So that is the read-only memory. We have the different types of room. First is we have mask room. These very first rooms were hardwired devices that contained a pre-programmed set of data or instructions. So this kind of rooms are known as mask rooms, which are inexpensive, okay? We also have programmable read-only memory or PROM. When we say PROM, um, is read-only memory that can be modified only once by a user. So the user buys a blank prom. Okay, you, example, nagpalit ka. You enter the desired contents using a prom program. Okay, then inside the prom chip, there are uh, small fuses which are born open during programming. So it cannot be programmed it can be programmed only once and is not erasable. So once you have applied a program on it, delete na siya ma-erase in case mo siya mabutangan. Okay? We also have EPROM. So when we say EPROM, erasable and programmable read-only memory. So EPROM can be erased by exposing it to the ultraviolet light for a duration of up to 40 minutes. So usually an EPROM eraser achieves this function. So during programming, an electrical charge is retained, wait, is trapped in, in an insulated gate region. So the charge is retained for more than 10 years because the charge has no leakage path. And for erasing this charge, ultraviolet light is passed through a quartz crystal window or lead. This exposure to ultraviolet light dissipates the charge. So during normal use, the quartz lid is sealed with sticker. So that is an erasable and programmable read-only memory. And we have a last type of room. We have AEPROM. So uh, AEPROM or electrically erasable and programmable read-only memory is programmed and erased electrically. Okay, it can be erased and reprogrammed about 10,000 times. So both erasing and programming take about four to 10 milliseconds. So in AEPROM, any location can be selectively erased in programs. So AEPROMs can be erased one byte at a time rather than erasing the entire chip. Hence, the process of reprogramming is flexible but slow, okay? 
Okay, so those were the different types of main memory. Okay, the random access memory and then the read only memory. So if um if naamoy wala kayo na sabdan, just ano reread again, basahabalik and then I hope you you understand kung sa ilang mga different functions. We have the motherboard. Okay, this one. So the motherboard. I hope you guys have seen this. No, if you have computers or if you have system units, no, this is how it looks like. This is where you are going to, you know, input the different components or other parts of a computer. Okay, so the motherboard serves as a single platform to connect all parts of a computer together. Okay, so it connects the CPU, the memory, the hard drives, the optical drives, the video card sound card and other par other ports in expansions cards directly to uh, via cables or via cables so it can be considered as the backbone of a computer okay so as easy as that i hope you understand the motherboard so what are the different features of a motherboard it varies greatly in supporting various types of components okay it supports a single type of cpu and few types of memories so video cards, hard disk, sound cards have to be compatible with the motherboard to function properly. So motherboard, cases, and power supplies must be compatible to work to properly together. Okay, so that is how it looks like. Mm -hmm. The motherboard also is mounted inside the case and is securely attached by a, you know, small cruise through pre-drilled holes and it contains ports to connect all the internal components and it provides a single socket for CPU, whereas for uh, memory, uh, normally one or more slots are available. So motherboard provide ports to attach the floppy drive, the hard drive, the optical drives via ribbon cables. Motherboard carries funds and carries funds and a special port designed for power supply. So there is a peripheral card slot in front of the motherboard using which video cards, sound cards, and other expansion cards can be connected to the motherboard, okay? And on the left side, motherboards carry a number of ports to connect to the monitor, printer, mouse, keyboard, speaker, and network cables. So motherboard also provide USB ports, which allow compatible devices to be connected in plug-in or plug-out fashion. Okay, so for example, pin drives, digital cameras, and etc. Don't worry guys, because I will be giving you, I will be providing a video on how, you know, the other components attach to the motherboard. Okay, but, um, you know, mas masabitan pa ninyo. So we have the different popular manufacturers manufacturers of a motherboard so we have intel asus aopen abit biostar gigabyte and msi okay so this one is an asus well, this is a sample of an asus motherboard okay so you just choose to those different manufacturers okay let's move on with the different memory units what are the memory units used in a computer so memory unit is this is the amount of data that can be stored in the storage unit. Okay, so this storage capacity is expressed in terms of bytes. So bit binary digits. We know that binary is a logical zero and one, representing a passive or an active state of a component in an electric circuit. So one zero one zero and in language a computer. No? So uh, we also have Nibble. When we say Nibble, it is a group of four bits, okay? And byte is a group of eight bits, okay? So a byte is the smallest unit, which can, be, which can represent a data item or a character. And a word, a computer word like a byte is a group of fixed number of bits processed as unit, which varies from computer to computer, but is fixed for each computer. So the length of computer word is called word size or word length. It may be as small as 8 bits or maybe as long as 96 bits. So a computer stores the information in the form of computer words. So 
here it goes. 1 KB, 1 kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes. 1 megabyte, 1 MB is equal to 1024 kilobytes. Okay, 1 gigabyte is equal to 1024 megabyte. 1 terabyte is equal to 1024 gigabyte. And 1 petabyte is equal to 1024 terabyte. Uh, sorry, 1 TB, 1 terabyte is equal to 1024 gigabyte. And then 1 petabyte, 1 PB is equal to 1024 terabyte. Okay, so that is the memory units. Okay, let's move on with the different computer ports. First is we have, okay, what is a port? Port is a physical docking point using which an external device can be connected to the computer. So it can be a prog uh, prog programmatic docking point through which information flows from a program to the computer or over the internet. So characters of ports, we have external devices are connected to a computer using cables and ports. So ports are slots on the motherboard into which a cable of external devices plugged in. And examples of external devices attached via ports are the mouse, keyboard, monitor, microphone, speakers, and etc. So I know and really believe it's, you know, understandable what a port is. Okay, first we have serial ports. So Serial port is used for external modems and older computer mouse. Okay, it has two versions. We have nine pins in 25 pins model. Data traveled at around 115 kilobits per second. So if you might have noticed, in ang yang yung chura. Okay, and ang serial cable nga ginagamit is mga ingan. Okay, so that is serial ports. Next is parallel port. So para asa man is parallel port in any young sure guys. It is used for scanners and printers. Okay? Also called the printer port. So it is it has a 25 pin mode and IIEE the 1284 compliant Centronic port. So ingon ani ang yang itsura. Okay para asa si parallel port for scanners and Printers. Makita ni ninyo siya sa likod sa inyong computer or um, for laptops, kay USB cable naman ang gamit niya no? for printers. We also have PS2 port, okay? Used for old computer keyboard and mouse. So this are, these are the old one. It is also called the mouse port. So most of the old computers provide two PS2 port, each for the mouse and keyboard. It is... IEE-1284 compliant Centronics port. Okay, again, that is how it looks like. Next is we have USB or Universal Serial Bus or USB port. Okay, so USB port, it can connect all kinds of external USB devices such as external hard disks. And we also have printer, scanner, mouse, keyboard, and etc. So it was introduced in 1997. So most of uh, the computers provide two USB ports as minimum. Data travels at 12 mega, megabits per second. And uh, USB compliant devices can get powered from a USB port. Okay. So I hope that you are learning so far. So again, kanin yung mga flash drive, delete na siya, tawag niya ka USB. Okay? Natawag niya, Ana, flash drive. So I hope that you correct that one. Okay, we have VGA port. So the VGA port, it connects the monitors to a computer's video card. So it has 15 holes. It is similar to a serial port connector. However, serial port connector has pins. Okay, so serial port na pins. VGA port has holes. Can I see ya? Okay. And then the power connector. So the power connector is a, it is a three prong plug. 
it connects the computer's power cable that plugs into a power bar or a wall socket. Okay, next is we have FireWire port. So the FireWire port, it is used for transfers large amount of data at very fast speed. Okay, it connects camcorders and video equipment to computer. So the data travels at 400 to 800 megabits per second. It is invented by Apple and it has three variants. We have four pins, four pin FireWire 400 connector. We also have six pin FireWire 400 connector and nine pin FireWire 800 connector. So that is the Fire port. We also have modem port. So modem port, of course, it connects PC modem to the telephone network, okay? Yeah, so that is the modem port. Okay? Then the Ethernet port. So the Ethernet port, it connects to a network and high, and high speed, uh, speed internet. So it connects the network cable to a computer. This port resides on an Ethernet card. Data travels at 10 megabits to 1,000 megabits per second, depending upon the network bandwidth. So if you may have noticed, no, kanang sa inyong laptops or uh, computers, ingonanya ang ingitsura. And then this one is the cable, no, the the RJ45 nga type of cable, saksak niya dara, no, in order for you to connect to the internet. So that is the Ethernet port. We also have game port, no? So katong gadulag mga, you know, um, have games. Um, the game port, uh, connect a joystick to a PC. Now replaced by USB. Okay, so karon, so una, yung nani pa siya, karon, USB na. Okay? And we also have digital video interface or DVI port. Nani ang itsura, guys. So the DVI port, it connects flat panel LCD monitor to the computer's high-end video graphic cards, okay? So it is very popular among video card manufacturers. That is the DVI port. We also have sockets, this one. The sockets connect the microphone and speakers to the sound card to the computer. So kabantay mo, kanisya mo na inambutanganan sa mga headphones and etc. So this is different computer ports. This one is the power connector. This one is for the keyboard and mouse. Okay. This one is the serial. This one is the VGA. This one are the USB ports. These are the microphone jack, audio jack, and line jack. This is the RJ11 modem ports. Okay. This is the power supply calling fan. The PS2 mouse connector. This one. The thumb screw parallel port, this one, this is the parallel port. The case calling fan, the Ethernet LAN port or the RJ45, Ganesha, Terry Nimoy connect yung internet. The security lock port, yan. Expansion slots, this one. And then the thumb screw. Okay, so I hope you guys, uh, you know, have learned something about the different ports of a computer. But uh, if you check, no, the, the computers, the system unit, again, that is not the CPU. The CPU is part of the system unit. Ito again ang balik-balik kung para, you know, para mabalaan dyan na ito. Okay, so pag inyo nang i-check, ang likod sa inyong system unit, makita inyo ang different ports. Pwede nyo mong ma-ignorante pa. Okay, para asa ani ang akong tanggalon para sa internet. No, para sa internet. So, you check on the ethernet or LAN port. No, this one. So audio course kana sidara and if naamoy mga if magpresent mo gamit no uh, asa dapat may ngon siya asa dapat ang VGA port na dito na isaksak kasi VGA na makabalo ka asa dapat ang VGA and where are the other USB ports kay sa system unit na mangya po ni sa atubangan right pero sa likod man siya so kani siya USB ports din ni eh. asa ang para sa keyboard and mouse so itong mga daan no karon kay mga USB naman sa power. So I hope that you are learning so far about, you know, the basic of computers. So that would be all for this video. And we have discussed about the different computer memory, um, the memory units and the ports. 
So thank you so much for listening. And again, stay safe in there. God bless to you guys and stay strong. Keep moving forward. And thank you so much. Thank you.